Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and all the ships at sea. It is me, your boy with the Kirby videos, Boss Incinerator, here to talk about Planet Robobot, a video game that I actually didn't plan on making a video about this morning. I was uh, actually going to skip this one, but I figured that after um, what I said about Triple Deluxe, it would be particularly appropriate to tackle Hal's second iteration on the 3DS because their initial was a bad idea. It was mediocre at best. It was completely too short and just probably one of the worst Kirby games they put out just by Kirby's usual comparative high standards. So I figured that after reviewing Robobot, this was going to be something that I was going to be remiss if I didn't do a video on because they definitely went back to the drawing board and actually wanted to make Robobot the best game that they could possibly have done. They actually tried with Robobot and it definitely shows. Like they have new ideas on the table, they actually work, and they threw out a lot of the stupid gimmicks that made Triple Deluxe. The unfortunate laughing stock of the franchise that it ended up being, they actually gave it somewhat of a narrative. It's definitely still 95% gameplay focused, but any inching towards the cohesive narrative angle in any of these games is something that I will definitely point out because it's the one thing that Nintendo always misses throughout all of their games, thinking that they can just go in it on great platforming alone, and that could definitely work, but it gets tiresome over time if that's the only thing they're doing. And they're definitely still on that sort of mindset, but it looks a lot better in Robobot. And it looks like they actually tried. They sat down and they crafted Robobot to be a video game rather than Triple Deluxe, where it seems like they took a limited staff, slapped something together just to get something out the door by launch day. Like, there was definitely a huge difference, and we're gonna be getting into that. The thing that we should point out the most is the Robobot angle, because it's a very clunky title, to say the least, but at least they have a reason why it's labeled Robobot. I will try to continue to pronounce that correctly, because it is insanely clunky and is the title of the whole game, so we're just gonna have to deal with that for this morning. So, why is this game? And it seems like the first idea they had, the sort of ultra power-up thing that they had in mind, kind of similar to the ultra eggs in Yoshi's New Island or Yoshi's Island 3DS or whatever that game was called, was going to be this mech suit idea for Kirby. And in the comparison of other stupid things that the 3DS has tried under the Nintendo label, the mechs for Kirby actually worked out well in comparison. They're definitely a great idea. They're not just a screen nuke that completely just trivializes the levels that they appear in. They're actually creative, they're somewhat balanced, which is surprising to see, and they come in a variety of vehicle types to make them somewhat interesting. The combat is well-faceted, there's multi-dimensions to it, so there's actually something that is something that can easily dispatch the enemies but not completely steamroll over the whole level. There are definitely limitations to it, and that's what makes it interesting. Because you got these things that have swords on them, you got some that have projectile weapons, some that can fly, some that have different jump capabilities. There's different types of mechs that are sprinkled in through different types of levels, and that actually makes the gameplay more interesting, whereas most of these things that try to hype themselves up at these big, cool, spectacle-laden power-ups, all they do is just, again, trivialize the whole level, and they're completely boring. Also, because they're just one thing, they're one idea that consistently reappears and does exactly the same thing as everything else throughout the game where you find these particular levels. It's very boring, whereas because there's a variety to the Robobot mechs that makes them way better and definitely strengthens the game rather than just looks like a stupid gimmick and makes the players eye roll whenever they see them because what's the what's even the point of playing the game you might as well just skip the stupid power up play through it as normal because that would actually be a more enjoyable experience ironically so it's definitely great to see that the central gimmick of this game the roboticizing of Dream Star or Warp Star, Dream Land, is definitely something that's coming to the forefront, not only in the story, but in the gameplay, and it actually works as intended. 
The one thing that kind of made me want to do this video in the first place is just the huge difference in quality between Triple Deluxe and Robobot. Because not only did they fix uh, a boring by the numbers platformer that Triple Deluxe was and laid it down with stupid gimmicks that just ruined any sort of enjoyment factor that you could get out of Triple Deluxe rather than it just looking good and it being so simple to play that anybody could do it, they actually also increased the other bits of the variety in the system of the game to make it such a huge difference between them. Like, the backgrounds, by and large, they're more interesting, they're more intricate. They actually came up with new level types, instead of just falling back on the old stereotypes of platformers. They bring about this futuristic city throughout the game, which is very interesting because it's like a... It's like a modern-day level where Kirby has to contend with a Metro-style sort of location, where they have to deal with traffic, where they have to deal with high-rise and how to platform around them, along with matching the enemy variety to that location, actually bringing some actual creativity to the forefront, something new that we don't actually see a lot in a ton of platformers. Something that's a little bit less creative is the circus level, because that's already been explored throughout the Sonic franchise. But Kirby's never really done that before, and it meshes well with a couple of the old school power-ups, and a couple of the new stuff that they bring in. They actually match a couple of the power-ups and the new copy abilities to the levels that they're creating, thereby creating a new experience, like, in total, not just slapping on a new copy ability and throwing it into the old-style levels that we've seen before. They actually have some creative cohesion there. So it's just very interesting to see when HAL finally flexes their creative muscles and makes something that is just so far out there, so much beyond their standards, and something that is the reason why I keep coming back to Kirby and keep making videos about everything they've done, because they usually go for something that's beyond the usual for Nintendo games. They have a higher standard internally, which makes it very interesting to talk about, and I'm glad they finally came by and made a product that's really worthy of their title, to really assuage the trepidation after what happened with Triple Deluxe. And the other thing that was the big breakaway for me wanting to talk about Robobot is the cohesion in its narrative. Whereas in Triple Deluxe, we got to have some sort of interesting antagonist, but it was the Bowser Jr. from the new Mario games thing, where we were constantly chasing someone who was kidnapping something else throughout the entire game. We barely got to interact with them. Um, they just didn't have any lines, they didn't have any show-out moments. All we were doing was just chasing them, and it turned out that Tarantulux, or whatever, just happened to not even be the antagonist in the first place, and then the real antagonist dropped in out of nowhere. It's very typical, boring platformer stuff that we already saw in Triple Deluxe. But, at least in Robobot, we get the antagonist. We get one antagonist, who is Susie who is the central point at which we keep fighting all the other antagonists throughout the game. She's the one that's developing these artificial robots, these regular robots, these clones of friends of ours. She keeps bringing in things that she finds across Warp Star, forcing them to her will, and then we fight them, which is more interesting than just dropping in a whole bunch of disconnected enemies and animals that we have to fight throughout in Triple Deluxe. You know, there's an actual sense of style to this game, an actual point coming from the narrative that informs the boss design. And while, you know, sometimes they don't work quite as well, the design for Mecha Knight is definitely a point of contention, I would say. And the other thing that I really wanted to point out in the boss design is that they really went hammer and tongs to differentiate them from regular platformer stuff, wherein they brought the Klonoa 2 idea again. And, you know, I actually give them points for this because while Klonoa 2 definitely brought the 3D platforming, well, I guess 2.5D platforming design to boss fights in general throughout the industry, you don't actually see it too much in, in platformers in general because they usually just go for that straight 2D design, so actually getting some of those 3D angles and these circular arenas that are informed by that game I just mentioned are definitely really cool because there's when you flip the perspective like that you just get loads of different design ideas that you can work with and Hal definitely did it makes it more interesting when you turn the regular 2D on its head twist it around to do something new and exciting with it 
I, I definitely appreciated getting to see those turns because you just don't see them in platformers throughout like any franchise like Kirby in Triple Deluxe never did this sort of stuff so you know seeing them really go at it and go at it with huge new ideas is just really nice it increases the pacing it makes it slightly more difficult it gives an edge to boss fights whereas in regular 2d it's so played out and so done so many other times that you've really seen all they can do and it takes a real creative master like like in hollow knight they, they do 2d but they do it in an interesting way. They bring in some of the Dark Souls ideas in Metroidvania to really combo together something that's interesting. It's fast paced, it's quick, it's snappy, it's difficult. It lends itself to some comboing and some interesting dodges. You need something like that if you're gonna make 2D more interesting. But Robobot makes that work because they can attack from the background, they can attack from different angles, they can make the boss a bit faster, a bit more unpredictable they can appear from different sides of the screen and they can inform that with their strategies and increase the ability to dodge the different ways that you can get out of attacks attacks are coming at you it just it completely flips on its head all these repertoires and strategies that you have to employ and dodging and getting out of the way all those things that inform these different sorts of boss fights that really make them stand out and make them more interesting, make them what they should be, the highlights of the entire goddamn game, and that's what they bring to the table. The only real downside that I could bring to the table for this review is that they do have a couple of the old gimmick ideas from Triple Deluxe that they brought over. The most notable are the lifts that you control with motion controls, but even then that's such a low stakes low effort motion control that it doesn't really warrant mentioning because it isn't as obtrusive as these usual nintendo gimmicks end up being like it doesn't really matter that you have to use the motion controls to control platforms because you're not under fire you're not fighting enemies while doing that there's just you know a boring way of getting from a to b that could have been replaced by literally anything else it would have been fine and just above all like the game just it just plays better, it looks better, it's more intricate, it's more creatively designed. It's definitely HAL coming back to the table with their best intentions and finally making a project that's worthy of their name in general. When they do introduce new power-ups and bring back some old ones, they're actually bringing back the, the good ideas. Like I said, they, their mech idea actually complexifies and makes <laughs> it makes the levels more complex because they can marry their particular variety of mech design to the level itself so if they want to make a shoot 'em up level they can do that if they want to make something that's combat oriented they got the sword bot if they want to make something that's more long range you can give the mech a gun those sort of things you can make a platformer mech and they do that and they can also marry that to things that are more spectacle laden such as the final boss fight where the mech comes into it and gets the superpowered laser attack or whatever they end up giving to the final battle mech to really make it the showstopper of the whole game combining the the usual 2d and this new 3d idea of just throwing everything in the blender for the final battle to make it both slightly difficult but more of just like a showstopper fireworks display that the 3ds can actually handle instead of you know, when they had to put these games on the DS and they couldn't really do those particle-laden, super god-level boss things that they like to do at the end of Kirby games. But, I guess another unfortunate that thing that I should mention to keep things consistent is that the game, unfortunately, is still short. It's not as long as I really would like it to be. The main story, I think, took about five hours just about to get done, which is not great for gameplay length. I would definitely lean saying that this game kind of deserves to be shorter because they got a perfect difficulty curve. The gameplay is more interesting. They've got these new levels that bring new challenges to the table and all that good stuff that really makes a platformer pop off the screen. Kind of literally in the 3DS's case. I guess another downside would be that the collectible idea definitely seems stable on to Robobot because instead of trophies and those sorts of things, music from the previous iterations of the series, the continued celebration of the franchise. What they have this time are stickers, which I I don't know why they're in the game. I'm assuming it's for the Street Pass stuff, and maybe it comes into play with these Amiibo, like, integration things. I don't really know, because I never really used any of these features. The, the collectibles are just kind of garbage in this game, which is kind of par for the course with Nintendo games, is that they never put the effort 
into their collectibles. They're, they're mostly just like, ooh, things I can put on a virtual shelf and look at for a little bit and then move on. Most of the time they don't even have the, the nice sensibility of having the lore angle with Smash Brothers trophies from back in the day where they tell you a little bit about the thing and the game that it's in and give you a history of um, where these trophies actually came from and they do do that partially in previous Kirby games and possibly even this one but then again like I said it's almost completely pointless they do have rarity for these stickers which is fucking odd because I can't imagine people actually seriously 100% collecting these things where it's for a, it's for a dead service at this point this game came out in like 2013 and Street Pass was almost dead on arrival just because of its unusability to regular users outside of like major metropolitan Metropolitan areas like the probability that you would have the sense of that probability where you would actually be able to link up with a person just completely randomly off the street with this system was completely absurd to even begin with so you know I guess Hal did what they were supposed to in having the integration with the street pass stuff or maybe some sort of online like sharing platform where you can I don't know do that thing that I think one of the Smash Brothers games did or one of the Mario games where you can put stickers on screenshots and share them on the Miiverse it's a it's a really weird idea and definitely shows the teething problem that Nintendo had with online connectivity with their games because they got into it really fucking late and they did not start off with the best ideas even when they did start with the Wii U because ultimately who the fuck gives a shit that you're putting stickers and can share weird screenshots in video games, whereas I'm sure what people really wanted was honestly just PvP out of online connectivity and maybe, you know, online co-op play. So, it's cute that it's there, it's completely fucking pointless because again, this is a review in 2022, this service is nine years old, and it was almost DOA when it came out, so obviously, it's completely useless now. There's no real point to any other online connectivity. I'm sure you can, if you'd really want to, maybe online co-op would exist for this platform. At least it was free and doable back in the 3DS's day before Nintendo did their Nintendo thing and blocked it off. But ultimately, that that's kind of neither here nor there. It just has this tangent into Robobot. But ultimately, it's a solid single-player experience. It's a really great platformer and an adherence back to their usual high standards. And that's why I wanted to make a video on Robobot because I comparatively kind of shit on Triple Deluxe. It was mediocre. It was definitely not up to snuff. And I thought that they were going down the wrong path. But Robobot really just shut me up right then and there. And another good thing is that they do add in the additional mini games and other modes that the previous Kirby games had. The most notable being the the version where you can play through most of the game as Meta Knight, which they definitely Meta Nightmare has been a consistent re-showing throughout the Kirby franchise, and it's definitely something that I really appreciate because it's it's basically just going through the game as super duper hyper mode, where you get these absurdly powerful abilities. You can just cut through the entire game and you just get to re-experience it with these cool like ninja-esque abilities and being able to just completely one-up everything in front of you up to the point where you get to the bosses that they build for the hyper mode itself they're the higher difficulty kind of x versions of the previous bosses that you do maybe at the very very end of the final final boss will be selling like completely brand new and built stock for the mode itself that's definitely here and that adds like another hour to the game it's something that i've definitely consistently redo because it's always interesting and getting to see that new content really just the the cherry on top to getting to re-enjoy a brilliant platformer experience this is definitely the kirby game that the 3d has really really needed and while i wish it was a bit longer it's just really creative it's poppy it's spicy it's it's really snacky and i and i definitely appreciated it because it's it's the sort of game that hal always used to make it's got the ideas it's got the creativity it's got the full swath of uh, copy abilities it's got the mini bosses that we expect from kirby it's got just all of that in a pretty little bow and I really wish that Triple Deluxe didn't happen and they just put more time into Robobot because this is the game that shows that Kirby still got it and why Hal is a consistent leader amongst uh, Nintendo's portfolio. So 
if you haven't, definitely go out and get it. It's not going to be a huge time sink for you, so, you know, maybe pick it up for like $15, $20 if you can. I would say that's probably a fair price. When this originally came out at maybe $40, $50, I don't know when. I don't know what the 3DS line was back in the day, but it probably was a bit too expensive for a five-hour experience. But it shows good signs. It's a good platformer. It's really everything that you really expect from the Kirby franchise at its best. It's definitely never going to out upseat uh kirby superstar but definitely an easy eight and a half nine out of ten this thing is brilliant and it's uh, just a little snacky package that um will really be the the kirby that you're looking for if you're still interested in the franchise so thanks for sticking me with the video i definitely did want to make this after what happened like i said with triple deluxe just to show that uh pal definitely got back on track so thank you for watching i wish you all out there a victory for gamers and join us next time when we're probably going to be talking about the final stop currently on the kirby train star allies after another medal of honor whatever it ends up being have a good night